Hello, my name is George Hayes, and this tutorial is on SDL 2.0, and it's about creating a better scrolling background. All right, uh, this is a secondary and from the previous tutorial I did as far as on scrolling backgrounds and looping them. This one here, I think, in my opinion, is a better solution to that type of problem, and as you can see seen in the previous tutorial the background takes quite you know you can scroll short background and then you could add stuff onto it and so forth like that but you have to do these large pictures and so your variety of your background doesn't change a great deal but with uh, this method here your background can go on for a very long distance and you can actually change up the stuff in it and a lot of other stuff as far as on it and it works quite well as right now it's a little choppy because I'm recording this with actually a Java recording system for doing this but uh, as you can see the background continues that way and you can also go back to other direction as far as on here now what it's doing is it, in this case I'm just ha putting the building the first building this uh, one here in at five times its distance, the building two, which I believe is this one, is going at seven times its width as far as distance. And the, when you take the modulus of it, it comes up with zero. That's when it places the building. And then this one here is at eleven times its distance, you know, as far as its width. And there's some stuff in here as far as for primarily compensating for screen size and stuff like that so it stays in proportion as you can see <laughs> I, I can vary the screen size off of it and it gets bigger and bigger and so on as far as smaller and longer or I can scale it back down to like this and it stays the same but the car is always in scale compared to the window that it's in like that okay so the way this one's working is and excuse me just a second <coughs> sorry alright we have the same standard as includes as far as in our includes here um, we have a class that's for a game class alright uh, in the boolean to indicate when it's running windows uh, instance renders instance um, event handler screen width and height uh, and display rectangle then you have your car texture and its rectangle background uh, texture which is the blue area the car is a little thing on the left the ground is a little square uh, cube let's see if I have it. anyway then building one two and three all right and yeah for the when we run it if the ground here or the road or whatever you want to consider it is actually a whole bunch of cubes just attached together as far as on it all right and anyway so this goes through the same standard you know thing as far as uh setup and all like that is pretty much the previous one all right and here in game once the class is created it sets the values to null and running to true and so forth and the pointers to all null alright position set to zero alright so through game execute it does on init load right on init we sit there and create our window alright uh, and here we sit there and create our render and then we go down and compensate for the screen size for the different textures and even though they're not loaded we're uh, doing that currently that's not the best answer but it does eliminate some issues all right so then we go over to back to here to load content which brings us up in here which we're loading the background the car the three buildings and the ground and we're setting the size of the texture it's rectangle according to the screen size all right and being 1440 by 900 we're using as default art so we'll scale everything per the screen height by 900 divided by 900 that way it's always proportional okay and then we go into the regular game loop here which and event handler 
the vent handler like last time it has the if you hit the quit button the little X up in the corner all right it gets set running to false and ends the program um, here we're just handling as far as uh, if the window changes sizes we resize everything as far as in it you know, so we're resizing the background the cars buildings and ground okay here just handling the keyboard as far as like D and A and escape and then D and A when you let off so when it's pressed down it sets to 1 when it's left off it goes to 0 so when it sets down in here what makes this simpler is right here uh, it just we're just checking for the position we're incrementing or decrementing the position and we check for a maximum value of in this case 49,280 we could actually make it a lot larger and then change these all to the same thing all right I just the number I chose that was basically uh, 5 times 11 times 7 times 128 or something like that anyway uh, that way it should come up pretty close to the same thing as we pass them by so it wouldn't be such a, if we do pass that marker alright now in here in the render alright we're calling render clear alright then we'll render a copy of the background because we only need to render it once now what we do is we start off with minus 128 like right before the beginning of the window that way if a building is like partially off or if the ground is part way off the window we still render the necessary part of it which is up to a full you know so if there's like a fraction of the building we're still re rendering because we're starting behind the building we're rendering to that portion of the building all right to the end of it okay for it and so that's how we're doing as far as the ground the building all right and one two and three and then we render a copy of the car last because the car goes on top of it which would be like your character whoever's moving or whatever you want all right so like i said building one's done it five times its width building seven's every seven times its width and building three is done at 11 times its width all right and it's done by using the modulus so once it comes you take the modulus of the value of x all right put it into there and if it comes out as far as in it with its position right then it well x would be in the position as far as uh, the person moving sorry it, they take the position value all right and we put it in here and then determine whether we're going to render it or not if we're going to render a building then we're going to sit there and subtract the position because the position could be like 30,000 right but we only got 0 to 1440 to sit there and display you know as far as across the screen you know whatever your screen width is so we're going to subtract that from it and then we sit there and just going to render those positions and that's how that's done fairly simple and by doing this we can sit there and have a very very long map and not have to have a huge image stored on there you can do the background skies clouds buildings everything in the world you can think of uh, stars and you know, whatever type of background or other you know stuff that you want as far as that's going to pass by the character you can sit there and set it up and do it like that and it just gives you a lot larger content ability and it's probably the best way to sit there and actually render your scrolling background in my opinion well thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this and please like and subscribe and that way it lets me know i should do more tutorials thank you